Hello, welcome to Footprint. We started our um, story of the Ghana Armed Forces with Brigadier General James Hagen. We have been on a journey talking about the history of the Ghana Armed Forces for um, the past weeks, um, if you've been uh, watching. Um, this episode will bring a finality to the conversation about the Ghana Armed Forces. And we're fortunate to have somebody who's well versed in uh, the history of the Ghana Armed Forces and all the activities leading up to the formation of the Ghana Armed Forces uh, in the person of Brigadier General James Hagen. Um, on this episode, we still will have him here uh, to take us to the next steps of the formation and the progress made by the Ghana Armed Forces. So this is what we are here to do. My name is Samuel Atamensa. We'll take a short break. When we come back, he'll take it over from the Transvolta Togo land uh, split uh, from mainland Togo and how the military made progress. Welcome to the program. We'll take a short break and we'll be right back. Welcome back to the program. Good to have you again, Brigadier General. It's, um, it's been a long one, but I know that you can deliver. Um, it's good to have you. So again, in the last episode, you took us through the ranks and which one, the sequence of the ranks in the military, which was very educative. But in telling the story of the military, we had gotten to the point of um, all the things that happened uh, with the Germans involvement and the French involvement and all that. So this will take us to say 1916 thereafter. Um, so how again did the military make uh, progress? Okay. I've already told you about the Cameroon campaigns in 1916. Yeah. Where we had battle runners Douala. Mm -hmm. And currently if you go to Bemakam, there's a portion of it <coughs> called Douala Lines, mm -hmm. named after those who perished in that campaign. Oh, okay. From there, a ship took the Gold Coast Regiment to German East Africa, Tanganyika. With the present day Tanzania, The pre right? present day Tanzania, mm -hmm. at that time called Tanganyika, because Zanzibar had not then joined, joined yeah. so it was Tanganyika. This was a German colony. and. The, here was a German colonel who later became a general, Emil Paul von Leto Vorbeck. Mm -hmm. Vorbeck was a very excellent general. He surveyed the whole of Tanganyika. He knew very well that there, there was going to be a war. Because the British, there was going to be a battle. Because the British were in Kenya. He made forays into southern Kenya that attracted the British to come down and finish him. So Gold Coast Regiment was transported mm -hmm. through Cape of Good Hope to, uh, the, to the eastern coast of Tanzania. Mm -hmm. They had a, a lot of engagement. One at a place called Kikarungu Hill. Kikarungu Hill. Kikarungu Hill. Mm -hmm. Then another one at Gold Coast Hill. But their most famous battle was the Battle of Narungombe, mm -hmm. 17 July, 1917. And here, General Paul Volbeck uh, surveyed the whole countryside. And he saw that from, there were two rivers, Matandu and Mbemkuru rivers. Between these two rivers, a distance of 100 miles, or 160 kilometers. Mm -hmm. No water anywhere except the water holes at Narungombe. So if you are moving troops, you will need water, water yeah. to prefer mm -hmm. your troops. So it was here, Narungombe, that uh, Paul von Lettovic took up positions. Go Coast Regiment forced with, with King's African Rifles from Kenya to their right, and then South African Battalion 
to their left. Gold Coast Regiment in the center, and the German positions on top of a hill. Plenty of supplied with mortars, artillery, and then machine guns. The machine guns have been placed in such a way that, because they are on a hill, one machine gun here, another machine gun here, they overlap. Whilst the rifles were interlocking, mm -hmm. the machine guns were overlapping. And at the same time, the mortars and artillery, who will be seeing you far away, the indirect fire will be landing on you. And in this campaign on 17 July 1917, two platoons of Gold Coast personnel, more than over 60 personnel, lost their lives, including the CSM Bravo Company, CSM Audu Bacano. Mm. They said his body was dissected into pieces by machine guns in such a way that they couldn't recognize, recognize him. Audu What's Bacano. his name again? Audu Bacano. From Ghana? From Ghana. They fought very well. By the following morning, General Paul Von Leto has withdrew from Narangombe. Why? Eh? Why? Because I've told you that initially he went around dumping ammunition, water, food at some places. So when the ammunition and food here is getting finished, he will have to carry the rest, protect himself to his next defensive position. That was where, what he was doing. And the Nigerians engaged, me, engaged him also. So the fighting went on until he left German East Africa and entered Portuguese East Africa. When I say Portuguese East Africa, I'm referring to Mozambique. And uh, Gold Coast Regiment was made to pursue him in Mozambique. Mm. And he crossed to Nyasa land. Mm -hmm. That is present-day Malawi. From there to present-day Zambia, to certain DR Congo. When he heard that, Germany had been defeated. In the, in the, in the World War? Wo World War I. Mm -hmm. So this came to an end. And Gold Coast Regiment and Battle Honors, East Africa, 1917, oh. which is on our colors. Mm -hmm. That is why when there's any important national parade, we come out with the colors to remember those who served honorably and diligently mm -hmm. in the regiment. So after World War I in 1918, Gold Coast Regiment went through transformation again. And the strength was increased from regiment to that of a brigade. So when the Second World War broke out, those in the colonies will have to support Great Britain. At that time, the Italians, were, they were in Ethiopia and Somalia. And they also attacked northern part of Kenya. So Gold Coast Regiment was sent there. Mm. Their first engagement was at Wajir in northern Kenya. They pushed the Ethiopians out, and they gave us battle on us Wajir. That's why Engineer Regiment, Wajir, Bar Wajir Barracks. Wow. Wow. Tell me, at this point, mm -hmm. um, the, the geography of the Gold Coast would not include the Asante and the northern part, is that correct? Now, the Gold Coast, we have Gold Coast Colony, mm -hmm. Asante Confederacy, mm -hmm. and northern territories. Territory, yeah. Three. Okay. So you are drawing your military personnel from all three places All three. at this point? Yes. Good. Because after the Togoland campaigns, mm -hmm. they composed a poem. Mm -hmm. It goes like this. Most of us are from the far north, and some of us from Asante A, and some of us from the Gold Coast B. But we are now in the Gold Coast Regiment. We might so fast, we might so far, that the very first victory of the First World War was won by the Gold Coast Regiment, unquote. So it tells you that I said, most of us are from the far north. Some of us from Asante are, 
and some of us from the Gold Coast V. What's Asante are? Uh, so some of them are, are from Asante. Oh, okay. This is an old, uh, okay. old, uh, okay. old, um, old uh, structure English. Structure poetry, yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some of us from Asante are, okay. and some of us from the Gold Coast B. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, so that supposes that they were all together at they this point. They were all together all as right. one. Mm -hmm. Administered by the Governor General in Accra with sub-governors sub in Asante and, and then the Northern, Northern Territories. Wow. And most of the sub-governors in Northern Territory were military officers. Oh, okay. As in British military officers? British military officers, okay. white men. Mm. Okay. So, as I said, outbreak of Second World War, a brigade were sent into Northern Kenya. Then after the defeat of the Italians at Wajir, the Nigerians took over the campaign and chased the Ethiopians into Mogadishu. Then, whilst getting to Mogadishu, Gokul Sajman was called in <laughs> on the Juba River. There's a river in Somalia and Ethiopia called River Juba. They were to secure and fight the Italians for the Nigerians to pass through to Mogadishu. For this Gokos regiment, uh, Gokos brigade did it with dissension. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we were given battle on this Juba. Mm -hmm. That is why if you go to Bema Bema camp, camp now, Juba Villas. we have Juba Villas. Wow. Over there. <laughs> From there, we were brought to the southwestern part of Ethiopia. The Nigerians chased the uh, Italians from Somalia to Addis Ababa. Mm -hmm. And when the fighting was intense, especially the Nigerians did very well at the Battle of Malda Pass. The, the Battle of what? Battle of Malda Pass. Mm -hmm. It was a, a pass between the mountains, mm -hmm. which Nigerians dealt with the Italians. Then the Italians withdrew from Addis Ababa to southwestern part of Ethiopia, a place called Gala Sidamo. And that was the task given to the Gold Coast Brigade to fight them. And we fought them at a place called Negeli. And we were given battle on us, Negeli. That is why 37 military hospital is called Negeli Barracks. Negeli ba Barracks? Negeli Barracks. Negeli Barracks. Barracks. That's 37 military hospital. Wow. Never heard that before, man. Uh -huh. <laughs> After this campaign, the British were losing in Burma. Life was were losing in Burma. So the former commandant West Africa Frontier Force recommended that the men from Nigeria, the Gold Coast, Sierra Leone, and the Gambia, the vegetation and the weather will suit them very well. And uh, because of that, we were sent in there. Into Burma. Into Burma. That's how come we got into Burma. And how did you go there in Burma? In Burma, we were placed and um, we were placed under, we were then we formed 81 West Africa Division. Because Nigeria alone provided three brigades. Ghana, one brigade. Sierra Leone, one battalion. The Gambia, one company. So they grouped us into 81 West African Division to operate in the valley of River Caladan. We have five divisions uh, operating to the right. If you look at the map of Burma, we have Bay of Bengal between Burma and India. That is the sea. Five division, Indian Army, was operating to the right. And then we have seven division, Indian Army, in the center. Then 81 West Africa Division to the east in the Caladan Valley. And the Japanese were to the south of them. We have the Japanese um, uh, part of the uh, Japanese 15th Army operating in that area. And the main job of the West African Frontier Force was to prevent Japanese reinforcement for their personnel in southern Burma. There is a route, Kanzok, it is way road. That is the main supply line. And that was the task given to 85, 81 West African Regiment. 
block it so that no reinforcement mm -hmm. will flow from there. But let all our troops be at the same place. They took one brigade and gave them to Special Forces Division. So the West Af 81 West Africa Division operated less a brigade. But where we show great an honor was at Mayon, a Japanese communication center. You remember I told you communication center at Kamina. Mm -hmm. They were having the same thing at Mayon. So if you want to defeat them, then they capture that communication mm -hmm. center. Which is also in Burma, right? In Burma. The 81 West Africa Division, some of them from the right, and then 82 West Africa Division from the north. Later, they brought in 82 too. And then the two of them combined mm -hmm. and took the wireless station at Mayon. Mayon, yeah. And were given honest. battle honors, mm -hmm. Mayon 1945. You remember this 25th January? Mm -hmm. this, every 25th January, it is celebrated. Atakrade. Wow. That's why we have Mayon Barracks. And that's in, in, that's in second day, right? That's Atakrade. Atakrade. Apremdo. Out, Apremdo. Okay. Good. So at the end of the Second World War, our men fought alongside the British, the Indians. And they came back. And they said they saw that some of them were not apt as far as facing the Japanese were concerned. Some of them were too much afraid of them. But our men did very well. I don't want to go into details here because of time. So when they came home, they started calling for our independence. Now it has brought us to the 1948 riots in the Gokos. Here was the Gokos Legion, which some of them refused to join and decided to go and present a petition to, uh, the to, to the governor at Osukasa. This thing that we are talking about, politicians were under it, including some of the so-called big six. But when it was becoming difficult, they withdrew. Of course. And, that makes them politicians. And the soldiers <laughs> face it. Odate Lamte, Atipo, and the other one, what's his name? Uh, if you go to Labadi, yeah. you will see his bus yeah, yeah, standing yeah, yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those three soldiers mm -hmm. love their life. Who were they? Who were they? They, they, had, they were part they, of they the... They were part of the 81 West African Division, which fought in Burma. Who had returned. Who had, who had returned. And then they led the uprising. They led the uprising. One of the main reasons was for the independence of the Gokos. Mm -hmm. And uh, currently, people didn't know that uh, some military personnel took part in that expedition, in that, uh, what do I call it, uh, presentation of, yeah. mm -hmm. and then lost mm -hmm. their lives. That today, when we are singing the independence story, those people are not mentioned. This is um, Odati Lamte, Atipo, Atipo, and uh, their leader, Ajete. Ajete, Ajete. Ajete, yes. Mm -hmm. Ajete. Sergeant Ajete. Sergeant Ajete, Ajete. Atipo, mm -hmm. and uh, Odati, Odati Lamte. Lamte. Lost um, their lives. Wow. Mm -hmm. So they led that whole uprising. Uh -huh. Is it the, is it the uh, um, 28th? 28th February, February crossroad cross shooting. Mm. They lost their lives. Wow. So you see now the armed forces contributed towards the independence. Kind of, of give motivation to trigger the whole so thing. So if we see the red color in our flag, it is them. No politician lost his life. So when they say our, our uh, uh, the blood shed by our fathers, which our fathers shed blood. <laughs> huh? Oh, yeah, wow. Well. Uh, it is the soldiers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The yeah. gold is uh, the gold color was because of our plenty of gold mine, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Then the green color was Forest. for our vegetation. Mm -hmm. But let me ask you, which politician lost his life? 
in the process. process of our independence? Well, some may have. Some may have, but not as politicians necessarily. <laughs> politicians, they don't die by heart. <laughs> Oh, people. So, so on the note of this question, we'll take a short break. Maybe you, if you have the answer, keep it to yourself. Because I asked for me, I don't have the answer. <laughs> <laughs> this is still Footprint with Brigadier General James Hagen. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. This is Footprint, and um, we are here with a celebrated military general who is who is telling us the stories and the beautiful stories of the Ghana Armed Forces. Um, you know, and most of us didn't know a lot of the things he's telling us, but uh, just for the records, uh, he knows his stuff inside out. No two ways about that, and so it's a good learning experience for all of us. Brigadier General. Um, we, 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 we are back from the Second World War and then the crossroads shooting happened and the whole agitations, you know, triggering the whole independence push. At this point, what did the military look like, the Ghana Armed Forces look like? Yes. When they came from Burma, they were promised some money. By the British By the colonial administration. administration. Okay. Those in Britain and in Europe, including India, were paid. Mm -hmm. But uh, our people did not receive anything. That led to, partly led to 1948. Yeah. Oh, I see. Including incrementing the prices of goods and yeah. services provided by the Europeans. And what reason were they given for not paying them? They were not paid at all? Uh, they, they were not paid. They said funds had not come from. London. Wow. How can you pay some and, and some they refuse to pay others? Mm. Because of that, some units were disbanded. So a brigade is made up of three battalions. Mm -hmm. Probably can be four battalions plus a brigade headquarters and other ancillary staff. Mm -hmm. Because when they went to Burma, there were people who were not soldiers. But they were carrying the guns, following the soldiers. If you look at uh, HQ Central Command, Kumase, their emblem. The emblem, yeah. Uh -huh. It's a head part, Kachiri, mm -hmm. with uh, a sword and uh, this cross. cross. Uh -huh. yeah. And underneath has been written, has been written, through our careers, we fight. Mm. Hmm. So this is a recognition of the... Of the careers okay. who were with... 81 and 82 mm. West African divisions. Okay. So when they came home, most of the units were disbanded. And uh, around 1950 onwards, they established Royal Officers um, Training School at Tishi, known as Rost, at Tishi, to train officers. That is where General Oka, mm -hmm. General Ankara, Af later, Africa and the rest, all of them got trained. And they brought some from Sierra Leone mm -hmm. and Gambia, and then Nigeria also. To be trained They, there. they trained them, Mutala Mohammed, mm -hmm. General Obasanjo and Ko, all of them. They all had their them initial here. military training wow. at Teshi. That is where we call present-day Ghana Milit Military Academy. Academy. Mm -hmm. They were trained there before being sent to UK mm -hmm. for further training. Was this Sandhurst? Uh, most of them went to Sandhurst. Some went to Sandhurst. And uh, most of them, Sandhurst. And then there's uh, another school at Mons. Where? Mons in UK. Okay. Was, where, that's where some of them to right. were also trained. Achampo and Co. Went, went there. Oh, I see. Uh -huh. Well, the Sandhurst had become very popular. Popular. Uh, yeah. Yes. And then um, when we had our independence in 1957, in 1959, Kwame Nkrumah decided that they should reorganize the army mm -hmm. because our name was not the Gold Coast. We were then known as Ghana. So Ghana Army, officially as we see it now, 1959. But as I've told you, it can trace its history 
okay. to Royal African Colonial Corps of Light Infantry in 1822. Mm -hmm. So, 1959, the Navy and the Air Force were also formed, formed. alongside the Army. Although the Armed Forces is there, mm -hmm. but the Army alone has about to test the strength of the entire mm -hmm. armed forces. Mm -hmm. For Navy, I would say we can trace their roots to the Second World War, where we fought in Burma at a place called Arakan. And then in Burma proper, there mm -hmm. were a lot of rivers, like River Chindwin, River Kaladan, River Maju, and others. Then at the coast, there were something like lagoons, which penetrate inwards with a, a lot of mud. And at a point in time, plans were made to attack the, the Japanese uh, positions in some islands. So some of the 82nd West African Regiment troops were made to join the Indian Army. So when those people came, that was the beginning of the Navy. Mm. Then in 1959, when the Air Force came into being, the Canadians and the Indians were called in by Kwame Nkoma. So Mami personnel were seconded into the Air Force. Mm -hmm. Then they started their training. And, and in 1960, more Air Force personnel were recruited, recruited into the Air Force, inclu including our former CDS, Air Marshal Dumashi. Air Marshal Gumashi. Dumashi. Uh, Dumashi. Wow. They were trained in 1960. Okay. And they used to form the Ducros. So Air Vice Marshal Boachi and those people were there? Some of them were Army personnel who, who were, were oh. seconded to the so Air Force. So this Air Vice Marshal Boachi would be the, the head of the Air Force during the Kutu uh, Achampong be, He time. became head of the Air Force during Achampong regime. Mm -hmm. And he was killed. Yes. Uh, about and the four, uh, the and, uh, military thing. officers who uh, were killed. Military officers who were shot at this. And then later on, um, there was another one, Otu. Otu, Otu became CDS. He, oh, OK. Uh -huh. Otu, okay. we were having two of them. Yeah, the, the Air Force Otu, I uh -huh, mean. Air Force Otu. We uh -huh. have S, SJA Otu. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, they are yeah, two. The one, I okay. don't know whether they are brothers, but okay. one became chief of army staff, one oh. became CDS. Okay, there's one, that, one that was, was from the one was the MA, area. MA mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think oh. they are all from the mountains. Mountains, here. okay, that's all right. Good. And so this one will lead into the proper, proper Nkrumah era uh, post independence, how the army uh, yes. was structured. After post independence, we were still having British officers controlling us. Mm. Let me take you to Burma. Mm -hmm. I told you we were placed under 81 West Africa Division. Yeah. And uh, when the 81 West Africa Division arrived in Burma, the commander of the troops, the army commander, decided to pay them a visit. He said he was struck by two things. A large number of unarmed porters and a large number of Europeans 50 to 60 per battalion. So all the officers and uh, uh, RS and uh, this and all of them, white men. Platoon commanders, white men. Officer commandings, white men. Mm -hmm. So when in 1959, Kwame Nkrumah decided to Ghanianize the armed forces. Mm -hmm. So a lot of enlistment and recruitment went in Please, yeah. uh, and uh, the last uh, British uh, CDS I think whether Palais or something like that they were asked to go, go home because they were not uh, 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 <coughs> they were not uh, giving attention to the orders given them by the Prime Minister or the President of the country at a point in time, Kwame Nkrumah was prime minister yeah. before he became president, 1st July 1960. That's why I'm using the term yeah. president or prime, prime minister. minister. Yeah. So came the Ghanianization 
So they had very fast promotions. Afrifa graduated in 1959. By 1965, he was a major. Mm -hmm. That was six years after. And to get a major rank now, it will take you, if you are a graduate, nine years before you get to the rank of a major. By three years time, 1967, Afrifa was Brigadier General. Mm. And by 1969, he was a, a Lieutenant General. That is how the Ghanaianization came in. General Champo, 1958 to, 20, uh, to 19, 1972, Kendall. a period of 40 years. Kendall. His own, I would say, is even better than Africa. <laughs> <laughs> but by he himself, too, he came, no, he made himself general. No, he was a Lieutenant Colonel day before the coup. Okay. So when he staged the coup and he was announcing, he announced himself Colonel Ikea Champo. Uh -huh. <laughs> And then within, within. Then after four, uh, four, within the, four five N years, N NRC period. When uh -huh. the NRC came to an end, mm -hmm. and he brought in Kote and so on. Yes. You know, at that time he did the coup with his juniors. Yes. Salom, uh, 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 a. A. Salome. Salome, yeah. Agbo, mm -hmm. uh, Kwamba, mm -hmm. and some others. Banasco and Co. They were yeah. all his juniors. Frank George Banasco, uh -huh. the Cape Coast guy. Cape Coast. Yeah. And then later when. He abandoned the National Redemption Council mm -hmm. and formed the Supreme Military, Military Council. Council. Yeah. Some of his mates called for promotion, and uh, some of them were major, major generals. Yeah. So if you are, they are major generals, how can he, the head of state, remain as a candidate? So they shared the post among themselves. That's where they started the, the, the balkanization of the military in Ghana. But that's where the problem started from. Oh. Oh, that's what, what, what the problem. They, are, ah, they were sharing the post no, and then joining no, Abdul Makar. No, at that time, they are in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. and Co. Uh -huh. They were brigadier generals. Because and, they uh, ended it. And then major generals. Because they ended it. They ended the same thing here. <laughs> All of them graduated 58, mm -hmm. 59. Yes. And uh, if your counterpart in Nigeria was uh, a brigadier general, major general, mm -hmm. Then you too, it is right to also promote yourself. Because Nigeria that, but, had a, that, a, a, but, a much larger uh, by army. By 1977, was a four-star general. Because the Nigeria had a larger army with, with, as you say, there were vacancies at that level in Nigeria, all across Nigeria. Today, although our, our strength is not up to that, but at if all. the president decides that we make the CDS general, Hola la, we shall all clap for it. Well, you that are is, in it, so you are. That, that, that is why it will be I, what, what yes. I'm looking for. All right. I was CDS, over 40 years in service. Ah, but that would be an honor. That would be an honor. Uh, but you see, what we've always prayed against is abuse. You see, the you are forgotten form, that. Uh, the forgetting that is the Idi Amin situation. Idi Amin. Look, the man, he gave himself post. Uh, he didn't want to call Napoleon himself the Bonaparte, queen. After <laughs> the French... Uh, Revolution. After graduating from the French distance, mm -hmm. his father bought Brigadier General for him. Uh -huh. So it's done. It, it, is, it is done. <laughs> so somebody who has served, let's say, <laughs> from 58 to 76, mm -hmm. that is 18 years. Yeah. And he has promoted himself three or four star. As far as I'm concerned, I, I, I don't see any problem with it. Africa by 1969 went to him as a Lieutenant General, head of state, Lieutenant General. Oh, no, I, I, I'm just saying that uh -huh. it's actually signified the beginning of what, quote and unquote, they used but to refer to as a rot in the, in the high ranks of the military. Let's juxtapose this with Jerry Rollins, who entered as a flight lieutenant, and for 12 or so years, he remained a flight lieutenant. He will remain flight lieutenant, there's a reason. Which, is, which region will be? I've told you that we write examination. He didn't write? Kutuwa uh -huh. Tampon wrote why he was head of state. The, excuse me to say, <laughs> Rollins mm -hmm. couldn't make it to the rank of squadron leader. Okay, at the because time before he became... he wasn't passing current affairs. He was writing Eastern, <laughs> Eastern uh, philosophy. Uh, he was writing the promotion as a mission. He couldn't pass to be promoted as the rank of squadron leader. So he, he was fair to that the system. That was major. So he was fair to the system. After all, you are the head of state, so what, what's the need to give a general to yourself? <laughs> what? No need. Whether he's a flat left hand or water, he controls everybody in the nation. <laughs> interesting, <laughs> interesting. So then Kutua Champon's time, how was that? I mean then, so post, post in Kruma. 
Coach Achampon did very well. He did? Very well. For the I'm army? I'm surprised that for the army, nobody can surpass General Achampon. You stand up for him? If I will stand up for him if I have my way. A barracks will be built and named a champion barracks. But why not? In any case, why not? The man That's did the very well. You see the Mowaks who were using the 70s, 80s, 90s. Which you bought from, e uh, from Egypt or Israel? From Austria. Austria, okay. Uh -huh. It was bought in by General Champon. Mm -hmm. The G3 rifles. Okay. That we still use them today. This is the G3, the long one. The, the long one. Yeah. F by General But Achampo. before you had the, the we have the, Kalashnikovs, We have the another right? long one from UK called uh, 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 SLR. Yeah, SLR. Uh -huh, SLR. But you also use the Kalashnikovs from Russia. Kalashnikovs, the AKs. They the, came in later during oh, Rollins', Rollins, Rollins yeah. regime. Because they came free. Uh -huh. <laughs> the, 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 the weapons and uh, ammunition. But the, G3, but the G3s were too expensive, you should know that. They were too expensive, but <laughs> the number he bought for us, I would say two thirds of them this, can, sell fire, can sell fire up to date. <laughs> Yeah. And compare them to the current weapons we are using, the M16s. But the M16s are, they, they, they are, they are, they are somebody's experiments. <laughs> <laughs> so, General Champon did very well. He did well, right? He did very well. No, you no, see, no, tell me the, that again. Because the you see, Air Force barracks you see today mm -hmm. was built by him. So in terms of expanding the military, mm -hmm. the, the structure of the military, you give credit to, to General Champon? Even in, in, in total, the whole nation. Look at his policy like Operation Feed Yourself no, We'll come to that, we'll come to that. But I'm, 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 I'm very interested in the military because... And most of the naval ships at that time were bought by Champon. Well, he bought ships? He bought ships for us, including aircrafts. He bought aircraft for the military, military, the Air Force. He equipped us very well. And then he bought ships for, ships the, for, the, for Navy. the Navy. And then armor cars for Ghana Army. Where, where, where did you get the Pinsguers from? The Pinsguers? Yes. I think they are from Europe, either Germany or Australia. I, I think it's from yeah. Egypt, Egypt or Israel, one of them, mm -hmm. because they were very popular there. Ah. They too, they too bought, it, bought them from, from Europe. Okay, uh -huh. okay. The Pins Goers and the States. Mm -hmm. And the Edison. But they were majority. all over the place. The Pins Goers were all over the place. Mm -hmm. And the Cocoa Board was also using, using some. Yeah, to enter the system. Uh -huh. To enter the, 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 the... They used the brown ones more. Yes. And then you, you did your green, green. thing. Wow. Well, it's, it's, it's very it's gratifying to know that um, the military recognizes the work of Tua Champo, you know. And um, can you say the same thing about the military leaders that came after Tua Champo in terms of the work they did for the military? My mother said something that in front of me. Nyimpa onyazi nankaida abuwa. Nyimpa? Onyazi. Onyazi. Onkayada abuwa. Onada onseda abuwa. Onseda abuwa. It means uh, every human being makes a contribution. Makes a contribution. Mm. So everybody has played a part. Everybody has played his role. Nice. Especially when you travel from here and you go to other countries in Africa, you will appreciate us. Really? Mm. So we still stand tall. Is that we correct? still stand tall. I went to DR Congo and went to, and saw University of Kinshasa. <laughs> then I went to Lubumbashi, the second largest time, and saw University of Lubumbashi. It's not up to our secondary in schools Africa. in Cape Coast. Wow. Go to University of Monrovia in Central Monrovia. It's not <laughs> up, up, at, it's not up to half of infantry film school. Wow. The, it is there you will see that we, we are better. We ha yeah. If you come to health facilities, maybe apart from Nigeria, no nation can compare itself to Ghana. What we have here. But Liberia and Sierra when they are sick, they come here that, for that, treatment. That, that's correct. That's correct. And our police force. Mm. I bet you, when you are here, you see them, you won't respect them. But if there is something, and uh, Ghana police say, they will get the person oh, who time. committed that crime one time, they will get him. <laughs> but when they get angry, and maybe nothing goes, and decide not to pursue you, you yes, think you are you free. They test you 
how professional they no, are. No, now they are even better. Now they are. <laughs> because some American guy came here and then somebody stole his phone and within two days they went to they went to arrest their man. <laughs> <laughs> we are better. Okay. And they asked what said my mother by my mother, in point years in until that boy. Until that boy. Each each and everyone has made a, made has made a contribution. Okay, so I may the, like some. Mm -hmm. Some of them I may not Passing like them. Prefer mm -hmm. some to others based on your own experiences. Experience. For example, the killing of the generals shouldn't mm -hmm. have happened. The killing of the generals. Uh huh. Seventy nine. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't have taken place. At the time, you are not in. The, you're, I'm not in the you're, service. You're just in secondary school. But I, I look at it. Yeah. Eskin died how many years? Two years ago or so. Yeah. So it means some of his mates, a kufu a champon, some of them, if we have not killed them, they, would have they, lived may, up to. they may be there. Yeah, but Eskin was, was a fancy them. man who didn't like agitation. Who? Eskin. Eskin. Yeah. As uh, a fancy time, man, he was a Lebanon. Lebanon. He was yeah, yeah, he was, them. He was a commander, the, right? Uh, 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 was he it was the first commander. Um, Unamil, right? Uh, uh, Unifil. Unifil, yeah. And that was big at the time, mm. very big. General Eskin, his name was in the and news. And he was order. saying that military, we should hand over by 75, we should hand over. Mm -hmm. That angered a champion decided that he the, would throw him then, away. Wow. <laughs> Trust to a champion, he will speak to you. Know. <laughs> the man will just turn to tree and throw you away. He's not going to say champion, maybe a champion. Maybe a champion. <laughs> okay, people, so this is still Footprint. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll just be rounding up the whole story of the Ghana Armed Forces as told by Brigadier General James Hagen. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the program. This is Footprint, and um, we are talking Ghana Armed Forces and the history of the Ghana Armed Forces, very interesting. Now, something happened. Post Jerry Rollins' um, second appearance, mm -hmm. um, he introduced something which eventually brought um, something like a rift between the army, um, something that later was referred to as the 64 Infantry Battalion. Can you walk us through um, this episode and how eventually they were integrated into the Ghana Armed Forces. Rollins' formation of 64 Infantry Regiment was what in other countries we we'll call them presidential guards. During Kwame Nkrumah's time, he was having. And currently, if you go to Abuja, also work. We have a whole brigade sitting there for the protection of who are selected from the from the for, army. from the army. Okay. And send there. So it's part of the structure of the part army. Part of the structure. Yeah. You know, for every leader, you needed people that you can trust. Mm -hmm. If you read the Bible, go to King David. His army commander, Joab was his sister's son. Mm -hmm. David, David didn't choose anybody. That I have prayed, so it, <laughs> you come. No, Most it's of Chinese. David's commanders were his close relatives. Circles, yeah. And uh, currently in Nigeria, also work to be, we have the same thing. These were some of the things, and then in other nations too, we have it. Go to Buckingham Palace. We have some personnel for the palace who protect it. This and other things decided Rollins to form the 64 Infantry Regiment. Outside of the army? Outside they were part of the army. A lot of them were they, recruited no, from they outside. Are, they are under army headquarters. Some okay. of them were recruited. Uh -huh. And sent to Cuba, okay, for training. For training. Uh, some of them also went to Russia yeah. and Libya for training. Mm -hmm. And when they came, they were put together. But in terms of their reporting systems, 
they were not in the main military They report hierarchy. everything to Chief of Army Staff. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's interesting. So how come there was so much hula baloo about how to integrate them into the regular army after the exit of the revolution? When uh, President Kufo took over mm -hmm. in 2001, mm -hmm. he decided to share them among infantry battalions. Oh, okay. But a core Remain. was remained. Mm -hmm. And we still have the 64, 64 infantry regiment okay. in Burma camp. That's interesting. So they operate like which of the They army? operate like any of the battalions. Okay. It was in the civil eye mm -hmm. that people think there was a rift between regular army and oh, okay. 64 infantry regiment. But we, we thought they were wicked people, that they no. have selected wicked people together. No. But even when you see their faces, you see that there's wickedness there. You know, at that time, <laughs> we're not having, uh, uh, we're not recruiting personnel known as uh, national security personnel. Okay, that's true. Most of this job were done by, by them, by 64 infantry mm -hmm. regiment. And their reporting was to the chief of army staff. I mean, I, I, I will take everything you say, uh, you know, but one thing I noticed was they were not ranked like, you, like the regular army. They didn't go through the ranking system. A yes, lot of them. That's what they went through. So that's how. So they will recruit you. They can't recruit you and give you a W.O. or a sergeant. Yeah, but if they you, went through the distance. No, I know. Mm -hmm. But a lot of them left without proper ranks. They left with the ranks. Really? Yeah, they left with the ranks. Because the ones I know who and were some of them, one or two, some of them were even given accelerated promotion mm -hmm. for their services rendered to the president well, at that I, time. I think the story of the 64 has to be told well because from the civilian point of view, it didn't, it didn't, look, it didn't look genuine. That's how the civilians look at it. Uh, but as far as the we military. were concerned. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. After all, there's a saying in trade that Akoko Obe Nini no, I'm not we Akoko Obe Abe Besre. Eh? A chicken, which is closer to the mother. When the mother catches a grasshopper mm -hmm. and is shaking like it like that, uh, and uh, the tie of the grasshopper falls, uh, who will take it first? The one closer, closer to the mother. Uh -huh. So, good. At least there were some things. They were getting because yeah. they were closer, closer to, the to the presidency. Uh -huh. And you know, in this world, when something like that, like that is happening, they, you will get some people who envy them. That's true. And that's why people kept on spreading very bad uh, information. Okay, but them. as far as the, the Ghana Army, Army is, concerned, is concerned, it was there okay. Was we'll take that. that. I mean, granted, they were. They were managed by regular seasoned professionals from the army. Yes. Like the then um, uh, who are Rich Taado and mm -hmm. the, all those people were mm -hmm. part of it, right? Yes. Uh, and 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 um, what was it? Uh, the, the one that cracker man, the light skinned person. And uh, uh, all of them, they went home with the with the regular uh, army, uh, army personnel. Okay. All right. That's good. So coming up to where we are, what do you think will be required to take the, the Ghana Armed Forces to the next level? If you go to Egypt and other nations, the Armed Forces are doing a lot. Mm. For example, if you go to Egypt, 40% of the economy is owned by the Egyptian Armed Forces. 40% of the economy. Hotels and industries owned by the Egyptian army. The current president of Egypt, Mohammed El Sisi, is a retired Fred Marshal. This is what Egypt is doing. The same applies to Libya during the Gaddafi regime. In Nigeria, Look at the top echelon of their politicians. They are all military personnel. They are recycled. 
So, mm. And that's why Nigeria is, is there. They don't want to leave for the young people to also express their leadership qualities and their beings. I mean, how can you still have um, um, uh, President Obasanjo, who has been president of Nigeria, double president, mm. still running Nigeria as like his baby? I mean, that's a question, legitimate question. And for Obasi me, Anjo, it's not such a good example Obasi to Obasi follow. Is not running Nigeria. No, no, no. I'm not saying he's head of state, mm -hmm. but he's Baba. He's the Baba of Nigeria. You can't go past him today, 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 Nigeria. <laughs> and I'm just saying that why should why should modern societies be structured this way? That the people who superintended over the society 40, 50 years ago are still the ones running affairs. It doesn't happen in any Western state. It doesn't happen in any modern state. Maybe our young men are not up to task. Just maybe. I, I'll take it as a, a big maybe. Mm -hmm. But maybe to mm -hmm. they are not being given the opportunities. So looking at the armed forces issue you yeah. raise, mm -hmm. how we can help the nation? No, no, I agree. The armed forces has a role to play. Uh -huh. And I, I know the e Egypt story. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, 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 the companies that construct, even the, in the electrical, electrical, uh, the electrical industry, power industry, military companies, that, or companies that have military backing, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. buildings, excellent work. Maybe our constitution doesn't encourage that, but it's time for us to look at what the military can do. Granted, How do we even call for military to have farms? How about that? I mean, I've always said that we have one organization called NADMO, and mm -hmm. I don't even know why we have an organization like that when we have the military there. I honestly, me as a person, mm -hmm. I don't know why we should have it. Mm -hmm. Because they can't deliver, they can't do anything. If it gets to the West, they have to always we have to call the military to come and come help. Mm -hmm. If you are you are the military is on call to help, why keep the organization? It says <laughs> distribution <laughs> of resources. <laughs> Which we I'm don't of have. the opinion that if the resources very well, oh, we shouldn't be able to go into farming and feed the nation. Precisely. As, as part of wider uh, contribution. wider contribution towards so, the defense of this country. But why not? Because poverty is also an enemy. That it's has a, it's to be an fought. enemy. Poverty is a bigger enemy than the, the one that our mind tells us is our enemy. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, trust me, this so, is it. So it all boils down to resources. Resources. Yes, resources. Well, you are still in service, so you can say that. But I say that it all boils down to leadership. It all boils down because there's not going to come a time in our history that will have all the resources. Never. Mm -hmm. We will never have all Napoleon the resources. Napoleon Bonaparte said it. But there will and come I, a time quote, that will have resources a Resources are not enough for any campaign. Thank you unquote. very much. I know very well, but as we are saying about leadership, sir, some people have fear concerning the armed forces. So some people think resourcing us to take a, a, a greater role, role in the running of the economy will make us too powerful. Oh, no, I mean, but no. powerful. That, I mean, literally, people, the armed forces doesn't become powerful because you give them role in, in, in managing affairs. But the thing is that, look, Ghanaians are Ghanaians, but lack of discipline is one of our biggest problems. When you are driving in, in, in town, you see filth and death everywhere until you get to the military zone. I ask, the military one day Ghanaians? Yeah. So the difference is leadership and discipline. If mm. we can apply it everywhere, we will start seeing change. People. You know, some Tampa during the Rollins regime, some military officers were seconded to, to head government organizations. Yes. And one time every, one time everything <laughs> was the same. It depends upon how leadership sees us. That's correct. That's correct. Brigadier General Higgin, mm -hmm. thank you so much for your time. It's been, it's been a uh, whole education. I think you should be, you should be writing a PhD thesis. <laughs> I am telling you, you should be. I mean, um, as you move towards retirement, start thinking about it. Okay. Because, you know, it has to be documented well, without question. Because some of these um, universities in, in other countries like the 
School of Oriental and African Studies, so SOAS, and all these. Um, Cranfield is now a, a red uh, light. It used to be a military uh, industry. They are in partnership with, with the Kofi Annan International Peace Cranfield, Peace right? Uh, Cranfield, yes. You and can the do Ghana that. Forces Command and I, I think they should, they should be able to sponsor it to do the, mm. these things. Because one day we'll be sitting here, one white man will come and tell us the same thing you are telling us. And everybody will go and buy his book. So, Papa, you have to do it. Oh, okay. Thank you thank so much. You, thank you very much. Thank you for the education. People, okay. we have been very well educated. My name is Samuel Atamensa, and it's been Footprints. Thanks for joining.